but you've got to do it this way. It's got to be this way. And take the helmet of salvation. And everybody knows uh, what salvation is. But here's the thing that God has shown me with it. Where is the helmet? It's on the head. The head covers, uh, the helmet covers the brain, the mind. I'm going to tell you something. This is Satan's favorite place to play. This is his favorite battleground. This is where he'll get you. This is where he'll bring you down. This is where he'll destroy you. That's why you have to have that helmet on. And what does that helmet of salvation mean? That means that when you receive salvation, you receive all the things of God. All the things of God. And you have to have that in your mind, and you have to believe it. Everything else we've been reading here, everything else that's in the Word, and you've got to have that in your mind. You've got to have that mind of Christ. You've got to have that renewed mind. And if you have all that, then you can go in. Then you can be victorious. Then you can be sure of yourself. A lot of problem with a lot of Christians is they're unsure. They, they're just, they, I don't know. They have doubt, they, they have fear, they have trepidation, whatever you want to call it, but they're unsure. You have got to set your mind. You have got to totally uh, set your mind and refuse to be moved that everything in this book is true. Everything in this book is true. If God said it, it's so. If God said it about me, then it's true about me. And all these things he said about us, but we live differently. We live completely different from that. We've got to get it in our mind. We've got to get it in our mind and convince uh, ourselves that all these things are true and go into that. It says take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. If you go in this way, presenting the Word of God, it's that Word of God that will destroy, that will tear down, that will set captives free. You all know the scripture, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, <coughs> dividing to even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, of, of, of sin and bone, all that stuff, you know all the scripture. But listen, if you go in this way, in this word, uh, and preaching the word of God, teaching the word of God, speaking the word of God, in the spirit of God, things will happen. Things will happen. And, and, I haven't seen anything happen for a long, long time. It's because we're not living this way. We're not fighting this way. We're not battling this way. He goes on, he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. I'm not going to dwell on this, but listen, we've talked uh, the last, I don't know, I lose track of time, but I preached a couple messages on living and walking in the spirit. This is what he's talking about. The Spirit will make intercession for you with groanings which cannot be uttered. And when He makes intercession for you, it's according to the will of God. That's why He says, pray with, always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And watching there unto you with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And I'm trying to get this out quick. Listen, we are in a battle. We are in a warfare. That's according to the Word. And I'm sure you all agree with that. And I'm sure you all believe that. But we live differently. We're in a warfare. We're in a battle. And we are soldiers. Everyone is a soldier. Somehow, we've gotten the idea that there are certain ones who go and do the fighting. And then we stay back and, I don't know, we work in the laundry or, or in the kitchen or, or whatever else. No, we're all soldiers. We're all to be on the battle line. We're all to be on the front. We're all to make that stand. We are all to fight. And the way that we fight is a confrontational thing. It's a one-on-one -on -one thing. It's an up-close thing. We have got to go out there and confront evil. We've got to go where evil is in order to confront evil. And, and again, I, I hope they don't mind. They go where evil is. That's how they won. Uh, the last time they went, what did we hear? 12 or whatever gave their lives to Christ. Because they were willing to go where evil is. We're not going to win them sitting here and praying. How long have we been doing that? And how many do you see? It ain't working. So we ain't doing something right. We have got to go, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, into the lion's den. We have got to go where Satan dwells. We have got to go where Satan lives and take them away. We have got to go and set them free, snatch them out of his clutches, and, and 
That's the only way we're going to begin to get them out. And again, I've I got to keep repeating this because God keeps telling me to repeat it. Don't get me wrong. Prayer is necessary. Prayer is important. Prayer is crucial. Because prayer prepares the way. But there's no sense in preparing the way if you ain't going to go. You don't need the way prepared if you ain't going to go. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's time that we go out there and confront it. It's time that we go out there and do something. It's time that we go out there uh, and, and put him in his place. It's a face-to-face -face battle. It's a confrontational thing. It's a warfare. It's all those things that I've been telling you about. I, I hope that you understand what I'm trying to say. This is a battle. This is a warfare. You are soldiers. A soldier has one purpose. That's to fight. God has placed you on the line. And it's time. A lot of us ran. A lot of us took off over the hill. A lot of us did a lot of other things. It's time to get back on the line. And it's time to begin to march forward. It's time that we take up the call and begin to go and to stand up for those colors and to take that ground that was taken and to tear down strongholds and to go into his strong areas and begin to pull them out of there. And listen, it might be a scary thing. It might be a nerve-wracking thing. But I can promise you on the authority of God's word, you do not go alone. You go with God. If you go in him, if you go in this way, he is going with you. And he said that if you go in this way and you have have all that armor. It will quench all the fiery darts. He will take care of you. He will protect you. But you've got to get it in your mind. It's time to fight. It's time to fight. It's time for the church to fight. The church has been sitting around and taking it easy and gathering up things and heaping up things and we've made uh, uh, this thing about getting stuff and we've made this about the flesh and we've made it about our comfort and we've made it about everything else other than what it's supposed to be about. And I know I've said this here before, but I'm going to say it again. It ain't about me. It ain't about you. It ain't about this church. It ain't about anybody who found to this church or built this church or any denomination. It's about him. Amen. It's always been about him. It always will be about him. And you are here to serve him. It's not the other way around, which we have made it. We have made it like he's here to serve us. Well, that ain't so. You're here to serve him. You are here to be his soldier. You are here to be in his army. You are here to fight for his kingdom. That's what this is all about. And I'm going to tell you something. Unless we're going to start doing something, unless we're going to get serious, unless we're going to start fighting, I think it's pointless to come in here Sunday after Sunday and say, pray for my kids, pray for my grandkids, pray for my co-workers. Unless you're going to do something about it, it's pointless. We have to do something about it. We have got to put some action to the faith. You all know that old saying. You got to put some legs on it. You got to put some action on the faith. James said that that faith without words, which just means action, is dead. So it's for nothing. It's not accomplishing anything. If it's dead, it's not accomplishing anything. You got to put some works to it. Pray, 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 pray. Don't quit praying. Cry out to God. Get a burden. Get a broken heart. Cry out to God with everything you got. Because the more you do that, the better he'll prepare the way. But once the way's prepared, you got to walk it. you got to go on it. That prayer is to prepare the way and to prepare them. You know, when you pray and you seek God and you go with prayer and supplication and with a burden and with a broken heart, God begins to work on the other end. He begins to deal with their heart. He begins to make things happen in their life so that he's bringing them to a point. But you know what? That point reaches its climax usually when you step into the picture and give them the gospel. If you don't, all the preparation is for naught. It's for nothing. We've got to confront it. It's got to be face to face. We've got to be willing to take it on. We have got to begin to be the soldiers that he has called us to be. And, and i got to say this again, and I'll try to quit. Get your focus off of you. Quit worrying about your comfort. Jesus wasn't comfortable. The disciples weren't comfortable. Paul definitely was not comfortable. 
Get your focus off of you, off of your comfort, <clears throat> off of your wants, off of everything that, that we've made this life about. Get our focus off of that stuff and on Christ. What was Paul's focus? Think about it. One of the greatest men of God that we have record of. What was his focus? That others would be saved. And whatever it took to accomplish that. Beatings and shipwrecks and prison and everything that he went through. I don't read where he ran down to church one Sunday morning and started whining and moaning and groaning and said, Brothers and sisters, pray for me. I can't pay this bill. Brothers and sisters, pray for me. The sheriff in town don't like me. They, they throwed stuff at me and they called me names and whatever else. But that's what we do. What did he say to pray for? That all men everywhere would receive Christ. And again, don't get me wrong. I know. You have duties and you have responsibilities. You have families to take care of and this and that. But God knows it too. And he said he would take care of it. He said he would handle it if we get our focus in the right place. But I'm telling you this, and you can take it for what it's worth and do with it what you will. Uh, the same kind of stuff has come up a little bit. Until we get our focus where it needs to be, we're not going to accomplish much. If we can just continue to focus on our own well-being and our own comfort and our, our, our own feeling good stuff and this and that and whatever else, we're not going to accomplish much. We won't. Until we're willing to fight, until we're willing to get into battle, until we're willing to go out there. And he said there, and I, I, to Timothy, where he said, endure hardness. It will be hard. There will be hard things. There will be hardship. There will be rough things and things not easy and all that. But he said, by enduring hardness as a good soldier, you please him who has called you to be a soldier. <clears throat> I, I, it's hard for me to stop sometimes because I just don't know if I get it across the way he gives it to me. Think about these things. Read these things. Pray about these things. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you and make it clear to you what it is that he's trying to say. The bottom line of this whole thing is you've been called to be a soldier. And a soldier has one purpose, and that's to fight, to be in the battle, to be on the line. And, and that's your purpose. And that's what God wants you to be, and that's what God wants you to do. And until we do that, I'm telling you, things will remain the same. They've remained the same for how many years? And they're not going to change until something changes, until we change. Why would you just all of a sudden change? If you've been doing it, how's that definition? What's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and over and over and expecting a different result. Different outcome. Yeah, however that good. And that's what we're doing. We're doing the same thing over and over and over and over. And we see what's happening. Where are they? All those ones we're concerned about and praying for and lifting up that we've been lifting up for years and years and years. Where are they? We gotta go. We gotta snatch them out. We gotta go and fight for them. We gotta go and tear down strongholds. We've gotta go and open prison doors. We've gotta go and set captives free. That's how we do it. That's how we get them. That's how we bring them in. I'll stop.